I think dragonflies are really beautiful. This one is painted in watercolour, but you could use colouring pencils or felt pens. You could also do any colour you like. I just chose the green and the blue because I really like them together. We're going to do the dragonfly body going diagonally across the page and then the wings going across the other way so it makes like a cross shape. If you want to, if you really want to get it nice and symmetrical, you could use a ruler and draw a line down the centre and that will just help you get it even on both sides. I'm going to start off drawing the eyes first of all. So these are quite big. It's quite good if you can do it to get the eyes the same size, but sometimes a little bit tricky. And then the front bit, I'm going to call it the nose, is just a little bit more pointy. And then the first part of the body is quite short. This is called the thorax. And this just curves around and is a little bit narrower than the eyes. The tail on the dragonfly is really long and thin. So I'm just going to do down one side. So it's not very wide at the top. And then it's gradually getting thinner until it goes to a point at the end. And then just to make the tail look round, we're going to add these curvy segments. These are going down the body, all the way down to the end. And they're gradually going to get a little bit closer together. Next, we're going to look at the wings. So there are four wings on the dragonfly and they all come off this section here. So I'm just going to join this onto the body. That's the top wing. Do the top wing on the other side. And then the two bottom wings. And these are a little bit thinner where they attach onto the body. So it kind of comes around and then goes up towards the thorax. So that's it, dragonfly drawn, quite a nice easy shape to do. Before we start painting, I'm just going to show you a couple of tips. I've already got my colours ready. That makes it much easier because you can just go straight back to them. And I've got Prussian blue, an emerald green and a yellow. And I've also got um, a brush with a nice point on the end. This is a number six brush and it's really good to do thin lines, which we need to do for part of the picture. To do a thin line, we're going to hold the brush fairly straight down and just use right on the very, very tip of the brush. So the lighter you can touch the paper, the thinner you can make your line. If I want to make the line a bit thicker, I can just press a little bit harder. So you can see here, each time I press harder, the line goes thicker. And also with the same brush, we can do a nice broad stroke as well. So ready to start painting. So I'm going to start with the eye. And just like we were just doing, I'm going to do a nice thin line going around the outside. I'm going to leave a tiny little white 
shiny bit put a little bit of paint on and then I'm going to clean my brush and get some fresh water I've got two pots one pot for cleaning and one pot with clean water in and then I'm just going to spread the paint so it's gradually going lighter I've got it dark around the edge and lighter in the middle if I wanted to make it even lighter still I could just get a little bit of tissue or I've got kitchen roll here roll it up and then just take a tiny bit of the paint out if I wanted just to get a lighter effect and then I can do exactly the same with the other eye so outline around the outside leave our little white highlight fill part of the eye rinse the brush spread the paint and then again if we want to take a little bit off use the kitchen roll another thing that's worth remembering with watercolor if you want your colors to mix then you put them together when they're wet. If you don't want them to mix, then you need to wait till they're dry. I'm going to work on the middle part, this section of the body now. So again, I'm going to go around the outside. I'm going to leave a tiny, tiny white lie there because I just want to see the difference between the eyes and the body. I'm going to clean my brush, just get a little bit of clean water and then I'm going to spread the paint exactly like we just did in the eye and then this time I'm going to put some green on the other side so just get the green paint Paint down the other side. Leave that tiny line. And then can you see how the colours are starting to run together? And like I say, that's because they're wet. And then I'm just going to get a little bit of clean water and blend it together in the middle. And then you get that lovely effect of the colours blending together. And then we're going to work down the segments in the same way. So blue on one side, put some paint on. Again, I'm going to leave that tiny, tiny white line. Clean my brush. Bit of green on the other side. And then let those two colours blend together. And then again, if we wanted to take out a bit of colour, back to the kitchen roll and we can just soak up some of the paint. And then we can carry on down the segments in the same way. So the blue on the outside, leave the tiny line. This is why it's really good to have a brush with a thin point. Spread the water. Add a little bit of green. And this time I think I'll put a little bit of yellow in there as well a 
and then if we want to take a bit of paint off we can just use the kitchen roll you start to get that lovely effect and we can just carry on working down the body down the tail sorry in the same way blending the colors so you can see here we finished off the colors along the tail i'm just going to turn this around um, and then we can have a look at the tiny little bit of the nose and the reason i've left this till now is just to make sure that the paint in the eyes was dry and it's not going to run in together so i'm going to do this green we will get the green ready get the nice pointy bit of the brush and then just paint along the outside of this little triangle -y shape so that we've got that bit ready we'll turn it back round then lastly we're going to do the wings so to work on the wings i've got a very very watery color so i'm going to start off with this watery greeny blue i'm going to paint bits of it on but i'm also going to make sure that i leave little bits white as well and once i've put some color on i'm also going to spread it a bit with the water we want this to be like a really delicate color because the wings are very very fragile and they're also um kind of well not scaly but they've got lines on them so we want to kind of show that with the colors that we're using so i've just got a bit of blue and a bit of this pinky purpley color so as you can see i'm putting little bits of it on and then i'm leaving sections where it's just white and then I could do two things. I could either spread the color with the water if I want to make it lighter. Or, like we were doing before, we could put a bit of kitchen roll on and just take off some of the color. And it also, the nice thing with kitchen roll is it gives us a bit of texture as well. And then we can just carry on doing all four wings in the same way. So first of all, bit of colour, making sure that it's really nice and watery. Leaving some white patches. And then just varying the colour a little bit here and there. We'll put a little bit of yellow in there maybe. So whatever we're doing, we want this to be really light. And then again, if you want to take the colour off, make it a little bit lighter, use the kitchen roll. So finally, back to the finished picture. I actually cut this one out because I wanted to bend the tail around. And I've also added a few tiny, tiny lines on the wing. But that's the finished thing, so have a go and see if you can do one too.